When first learning how to solve equation, you learn to do inverses or the opposite and to keep the equation balanced. Say we wanted to solve for x here, we have x plus 3, we could do the opposite of that, minus 3, but we've got to do it to each side of the equal sign to keep it balanced, and that would give us a solution here of x equals 2. Well, we can use these same techniques by taking the square root. For example, if we had x squared equals 9, our opposite or inverse per se of this x squared would be to be taking the square root of that x squared term. That's going to give us a value of x by itself. Now since we did it to one side we've got to keep it balanced, do it to the other, square root of 9 which is going to give us x equals 3. Now we can definitely see that 3 is a solution to this equation. 3 squared definitely equals 9 but we actually have to consider something else. What if this x was a negative? Is negative three squared equal to nine? Well, negative three times negative three is nine. So when you take the square root, you have to take into account both that positive and negative solution. And we do that by writing plus or minus whenever we take the square root. So that would give us x equals positive three or negative three as a solution. So to solve by taking the square root, we could break it down into three simple steps that hopefully make sense. Isolate the squared term, get whatever is squared by itself, take the square root of each side of the equation, don't forget the plus or minus, and then just solve like you would normally. Here we go, we've got x squared equals 12. First, our x squared term is by itself already, excellent. Square root each side of the equation, that's gonna give us x equals plus or minus positive or negative square root of 12. Now we can just simplify this and we're going to get x equals positive or negative plus or minus 2 square root of 3. Let's try this one. q squared minus 15 equals 1. First, getting our q squared term by itself, add 15 to both sides, giving us q squared equals 16. Next, let's take the square root of each side of the equation, just like we've been doing, and that gives us q equals positive or negative 4. The square root of 16 is 4, and we've got our plus and minus option. Wow, that is a nice 4 right there. Sometimes numbers make me happy, and that's one of them right there. Here, let me screenshot this one sec. Okay, perfect. That's going on the fridge. All right, x minus 6 squared equals 36. This time, our squared term is x minus 6. So we're not going to add 6 to start. We're actually going to take the square root of both sides because this whole x minus 6 in parentheses is being squared. That's going to give us x minus 6, just taking the square root of what was squared, x minus 6 equals plus or minus the square root of 36, which is 6. Now we want to solve. Add 6 to each side, and we get x equals 6, the 6 that we added, plus or minus the 6 that we found by taking the square root. Now to get our final answer, we need to consider both of these positive and negative options. That gives us 6 plus 6, or 6 minus 6. And that's going to give us x equals 12 from the 6 plus 6, or 0 from 6 minus 6. And it's never a bad idea, especially when things get a, get a little messy, to check back with the er original equation. That would be 12 minus 6, 6 squared equals 36, good. Or 0 minus 6, negative 6 squared, also 36. So we are golden with these answers. Okay, for this guy here, we want to solve for our squared term first. That's x plus 1 squared. We're going to do that by adding 3 to each side. That's going to change this 47 to 50, and then dividing each side by 2, we're going to get x plus 1 squared equals 25. And this is just like the last example. We'll get x plus 1 equals plus or minus 5, subtracting 1, x equals negative 1 plus or minus 5, and negative 1 plus 5 gives us 4, negative 1 minus 5 gives us negative 6, and we've got our solutions. And as a last note, remember to watch out for those imaginary solutions. If we square rooted this equation, we're going to get x equals plus or minus 2, the 2 coming from the square root of 4, i as an imaginary for that square root of a negative. Just keep in mind that you might encounter some imaginary solutions when solving these types of equations.